He shone at the World Cup, creating chances of scoring two goals and almost putting Belgium out of the World Cup in the process. But this season he has done absolutely nothing for Real Betis. He scored zero goals and got zero assists, and he wasn't even picked for the Asian Cup that starts in January. So what happened to Takashi Inui, and why is he so bad now? Hi everyone, I'm Ghost of Starlight and welcome back to another who is slash what happened to video. And in these videos we uh, look at a player's career and uh, go through what clubs they used to play for and also what ha might happen to them in the future or in the case of what happened to videos, what happened to them in the past that made them, that took them out of the limelight as it were. So yeah, a couple of notices as well for um, subscribers. We are on 92 subs at the moment, we've had a huge amount of subs. In, well, I've had a huge amount of subs in the past few days, so please can we get to 100 subs by the end of January, that would be so, so good. Uh, I was at 50 at the end of October, so it just shows how much the channel has progressed, really. In such a short time, we've got uh, a good amount of subs, and yeah, um, yeah. so hopefully 100 by the end of January, that would be so, so good. So yeah, make sure to subscribe if you're new. And also, second notice is um, there might not be Roto Kaido for a bit. The main reason for that is my internet is not working correctly. It means essentially that I can still use it to upload and find images and dig research for these sort of videos, but I cannot play online and I can't really watch YouTube videos either without them buffering. Uh, so basically, the fact that I can't play online means that I can't do Roto Kaido. I had a I was going to play against another YouTuber this week, but my internet was just not working at all. So uh, um, it usually takes about a week to sort out these sorts of problems, so don't expect Road to Akado for a little bit. Of course, we've got to edit it as well, so it's probably going to be a couple of weeks before I do Road to Akado again. So we start at the start of Takashi Anu's career, uh, after he won the high school football tournament in Japan with his school. So this is like the biggest amateur uh, sport tournament in Japan, which shows it's quite impressive. It just shows how popular football slash soccer is in Japan. And uh, this tournament is quite a big deal. And usually the best players get signed to J League or J League Two clubs. And uh, it was no different for Anui. Uh, he uh, joined Yokohama F Marinos in 2007, straight after winning the competition, um, age 19. So. Um, Yokohama F Marinos are one of Japan's most prestigious clubs. They're one of just two clubs to have been in the J League since it was uh, formed. Um, and at the time they had many good players and they still do have good players, including Yuji Nakazawa, who um, uh, has got, I believe he's he's got more than over a hundred caps for Japan. He still plays actually, but uh, that just shows the pedigree of players that they had at the time. However, Inui only made seven appearances for Yokohama F Marinos before going out on loan to a J League two J two League side in Cerezo Osaka, who are now a J League side, but at the time they were J J two League. And he joined them in 2008 in a deal that was made permanent a year later. And uh, at his time at Cerezo Osaka, Inui helped them gain promotion to the J League in 2010, where they finished third in his first season, um, in their first season in back in the J League. So uh, that just shows how much of an impact Inui had on Cerezo Osaka. He then moved to Europe. Of course, good performances by young Japanese players usually mean a move to Europe, and he joined a Zwei Bundesliga side of VfL Berkham. Uh, he also uh, made his national team debut for Japan while at Cerezo Osaka uh, in 2009. He scored 41 goals in 30, 132 appearances at Cerezo Osaka, a very good return for, um, I, I believe he was playing central attacking mid at the time, or maybe he was playing left mid, I'm not sure. He uh, sort of uh, changed between the two positions. And due, during the one season Inui was at Bochum, um, the club only managed to finish 11th in the Zwei Bundesliga. This was a club who had, a couple of seasons before, been in the top division of German football. However, Inui was the club's top scorer with 7 goals in 32 appearances. That's not too many goals, I know, but uh, the club uh, were just not doing too well. And that's quite impressive for a winger slash attacking midfielder fielder that Anui was. And uh, this meant a move to Eintracht Frankfurt in 2012. He was bought quite quickly for, I believe, 1.5 million. And um, unfortunately, on the whole, Anui failed to impress at Frankfurt. And after a good first season where Anui shone, um, he scored six goals that season and had many assists as well. He did. He largely failed to impress in the following seasons, 
and was relegated to the bench on many occasions in his second and third season at the club. Um, unfortunately, he scored just nine goals in 87 appearances at Frankfurt, only two goals more than he managed in one season at VfL Bochum. And um, next we have SD Ibar, which he moved to for 500, just 500,000 in 2015, quite a low transfer for a fee. And um, he was a, once again a sporadic performer for Ibar. For example, he scored a brace against Barcelona in 2017, scoring Ibar's only two goals in a 4-2 loss, but he only actually managed one of a goal that season uh, throughout the entire season of 16-17, which shows he some matches he would just come alive, but the majority of the time he would play quite poorly. Um, he's really a big game player. He scored 11 in 94 for Ibar, but during the end of his time at Ibar, he did start progressing. He had multiple games where he did well, and he could change games quite well. And next we have World Cup 2018 and uh, his move to Real Betis. Uh, he knew he moved to Real Betis just before the World Cup. His, his uh, contract had run out at SDI Bar, and uh, this move was shown to be a very good one uh, when Inui did perform well at the, the World Cup. Um, Inui had a, a massive eight shots on target in just not 292 minutes. You've got to remember he was playing at the, on the left wing as well, so, uh, so he wasn't really a striker. Um, with two goals, including a brilliant strike versus Belgium. Uh, one goal was against Senegal and one was against Belgium. And it almost put Belgium out, but unfortunately not. So what's gone wrong for any Real Betis? Why has he just not made an impact at all? So I, I've compiled four reasons which could be why he's not doing too well. So the first reason is that there are better players at Betis. So Inouye has been benched and this is definitely true. They've got Christian Teo, they've got Joaquin, they've got Junior Firpo who plays on the left now. There's just not enough space for Inouye to play which means that uh, he has to sit on the bench for the majority of the time. And there's lots of cams as well, so he knew he can't move to that position either. Um, and when he is subbed on, this is the second reason, when he is subbed on, it's unfortunately a bit too late in order to make an impact, and uh, he just doesn't make an impact, hasn't scored any goals, and um, he hasn't really had too many shots either. He's an, he has an average of just one shot per game, which is not too good. And here are the hypothetical reasons. Reason three, is he too old to be a winger? He's 30 now, uh, he's been around for a bit and it's only in the past few seasons that he's really started to become good. Is he just too old for a winger? Um, does he need to change his position? Because he's not that technically skilled. Yes, he has good finesse shots, but the majority of his skill comes from his pace. And is he starting to slow down a bit? And finally, was World Cup 2018 just a fluke? Of course, we've seen he hasn't been that good in the past with SD Ibar and Eintracht Frankfurt. Was World Cup 2018 just a massive fluke where he managed to play well? Well, these are both hypothetical reasons. I honestly don't think the last one is true, but I mean, it's your choice as a viewer whether you think it's true or not. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully my internet gets sorted out so Road to Akadi will be coming soon. If not, um, make sure to leave suggestions for more videos in this sort of series. Um, yeah, I don't think there's too much else to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.